Why'd you leave me alone, Slinger? Because I don't believe you really want me to, Angela. You're always going away and coming back expecting to find me waiting. Where'd you go? Why don't you come with me and find out? Leave bitter water on that drunken old man of yours. Don't make me catch you again. Want to know why I came back this time, Angie? For you. You don't love me. All you want are those fancy guns of yours. They take good care of me. You too. Wherever we go. Raleigh, Carson City, St. Louis. I get you all the fancy trimmings and the high heel shoes. That's what you promised. You don't think any more of me than you do of that buckskin out there. I can have that buckskin, too. All I have to do is get it. No. No, I have to be back by noon. I have to meet the stagecoach. Let your old man meet it. Let him take the suckers. Have you like I can have that buckskin? All I gotta do is catch it. Yeah, and catch me too. I'd seen the stagecoach coming, and I was heading for town like always to tell Doc and Angie. But I sure didn't feel right about it. The Doc and his daughter gambling that way with folks that came through. Doc could make a good living if he tried. You know, I had a funny feeling this day, like something pretty bad was going to happen. I don't know. Maybe it's just as well a man can't see too far ahead. Greetings, dead. Greetings and salutations. The dust of the ages has settled upon you gracefully. <laughs> uh, Other? <clears throat> oh, I, uh, I trust we have uh, another passenger? You might say that, Doc, and then again you might not. Uh, the bird's inside. Oh. Welcome, sir. Welcome to Bitterwater. You can rest your legs here, Spell, mister. I got a wheel to fix before we move on to Carson City. This is the only place to wait? Hmm. From the looks of this metropolis, a man could take three steps and be in the middle of nowhere. Oh, not exactly, sir. <laughs> not exactly. Uh, there is the local tavern right there, presided over by a genial gentleman whom we call the Nevada Nightingale. <laughs> He will, I'm sure, sir, be delighted to cater to the needs of the uh, inner man. 
My name's, uh, <coughs> is Medley. Dr. J. Goldsboro Medley, at your service. Nevada? How's he gonna take him to poker if Miss Angie isn't here yet? Gee, I was getting worried, Miss Angie. The, uh, the population, as you can see, sir, is numerically small, but the quality is high, very high. I ain't gonna live here, so don't bother to tell me. How long is it gonna take you to fix that wheel? Don't go too far. Sometimes I fix real fast. What you doing? Playing. Playing what? Ralph. Ralphie, you get away from her. I'm not hurting him, Mrs. Adams. I don't want you talking to my boy. But, Mom. Oh, oh, hush up. Thanks the Lord we only have to come to this town once a month for vittles. Your ma would turn in her grave if she knew what you're like. What am I like? Everybody for 40 miles round knows what you're like. Well, are you gonna take my money or sit there stupid like waiting on this trash? All right. Now, Mrs. Adams. Come, Ralphie. How do you do? Uh, are you planning on staying long, Mr. Cranston? Just long enough to get that wheel fixed. All right. Seems to me it was working fine. Nevada. Nevada, a little hospitality, if you please. Nevada, this is Mr. Cranston of Philadelphia. He's oh, yeah. traveling in ladies' wear. Oh, now, ain't that interesting? I never seen a man in ladies' wear before. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> Nevada. Well, sir, here is your, your very good health. Is uh, this a private game, or can anybody get in? Oh. The doc told me this was a friendly town. Oh, I beg your pardon. I, that's so stupid of me, I'm sure. I should have introduced you. Uh, this is my very good friend, Mr... Mr... Uh, Cranston. Uh, Mr. Cranston, yes, of Philadelphia. I uh, wouldn't mind a hand or two. It might break up the monotony. You think I got time, miss? Oh, I assure you, sir, the stage won't leave without you. Want to cut the deal? You want in, Doc? No. No, thank you, my dear. I have got uh, uh, a couple of patients to mm -hmm. see. You, Nevada? Just you and me, huh, Miss? Uh, Miss Angela. How uh, much can we bet? Say, uh, table stakes? If you want to. Well, I'll bet, say, uh, Ten dollars. I'll call you bet, Mr. Cranston. How many cards? I'll take two. <laughs> Not that I need them. Three. Your bet, Mr. Cranston. Say, uh, twenty dollars. I'll call you twenty. And I'll raise you fifty. Fifty dollars? That's an awful lot. You don't have to call. You asked for table stakes and you got it. How dare you? How dare you raise my three aces when you only had a pair of fours? You have no right to look at my cards. You didn't pay for the privilege. You cheated. I don't cheat, Mr. Cranston. I play character. You were beat before you started. I figured you had no nerve and you proved it. Now get out of here. Get out? Look, I want my money! Get that 
Sinthorn out of here. Let's say get him out. Yes, Mr. Slinger. Well, start playing. I like your music. What's the matter? Aren't you going to thank me for taking care of the sucker? What do you say, Doc? I'll say, why don't you stay away from here? You and your filthy guns! Yeah, they're beautiful, aren't they? Can't tell one from the other. I could have handled him without shooting. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's no good for your business shooting up the customers. Give you and Doc a bad name. Angela, my dear, it's time to go home. It's, it's getting late. Late? Oh, that's no way to talk, Doc. I picked up a few bucks in Raleigh yesterday. How about arranging a little game for me? No, thank you. We're not interested. And why don't you stay in Raleigh? What we have to do here is cause trouble. Not everybody here feels that way. Do they, Angela? Angela? Thank me yet, honey. You're wasting your time, Slinger. We have lots of time. Trash! You heard me. Trash. Drinking, my dear boy, I never drink during office hours. I just steady, steady, I get... You know, you, you're much too big a boy to be worried about a little bit of a teensy weensy splinter like that. Uh, my mom knew you was drinking, and I was here. My dear boy, you run home and tell your mother, the Dr. Medley, drinking like a fish. He'll do no such thing. You can't have that sliver taken out, Rafi. You'll have it taken out. Give me a twist. Put your finger. This one. All right. I'm sorry. May I be of help? Oh. Yeah, I guess you can. Now, oh, let's have a look at that sliver. <coughs> yeah? Hey, that's quite a cough you've got there, son. Ralphie! Ralphie! What are you doing here? Now, you run along home. Yes. Do as you're told, and I'll run by. You keep your drunken hands off my boy, you hear? Keep them off. That's uh, quite a cough your boy has there, madam. I know what he's got. What's your name? Merritt. Dr. Bruce Merritt. A doctor? Oh, thanks the Lord. Maybe somebody with some decency. Maybe you come just in time. Them, them medleys. You and your daughter both. You're, you're beneath contempt and, and beyond redemption. My dear madam, my... Well, well, Dr. Merritt, it's a great pleasure to see you, I'm sure. I am my medley, Dr. Medley. Dr. Medley? Yeah. Uh, and this is my daughter, Angela. Angela, this is Dr. Merritt. Miss Medley? I guess you could have come at a better time, Dr. Merritt. You just passing through? Well, hardly. Oh, uh, Angela, my dear. Would you be kind enough, dear, to go in and brew a pot of coffee for Dr. Merritt and... Uh, yeah. 
Uh, Dr. Merritt, we didn't expect you quite so soon. <laughs> but we'd be very happy to have you join us in a cup of coffee. I, uh, I missed the stage at Raleigh and spent my last few dollars to buy that horse out there. I was anxious to get her as soon as possible. Why? Well, I'm the one who answered the advertisement. I'm the one who bought this. Bought what, Dr. Merritt? Perhaps this clipping from the Boston transcript can explain. For sale to physician with ambition. Private practice well established in thriving city of Bitterwater, Nevada Territory. Applicant must be of good character, sober, and willing to work hard. Dr. Medley. Can you honestly say this practice is worth $250? Of course it is, my dear boy. Of course it is. <laughs> say, Doc, you left your cane at the saloon. I thought you might want it for going around and seeing your patients, Doc. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That is very kind of you. Uh, uh, may I present my associate and colleague, Dr. Merritt. So you're going to help old Doc, huh? I got a real nice place for you. Yes, sir. -y. Real nice. Right next to the stable. I'll go and fix it up right away for you, sir. Thank you. I doubt if you have even a nickel left of my $250, have you? My dear boy, I, I, I... Uh, Look, don't Dr. need to Mary. explain. Yes, sir. That Doc Merritt sure is a fine gentleman. Got him fixed up pretty as all get out. Give him that old tack room of yours, Mr. Slinger. Same old bunk you used and a couple of blankets. You should have seen Miss Angie looking at him. Eyes shining like Lily in his frog pond. Never seen anything like him. I reckon Mr. Slinger don't like my cooking. His favorite dish, too. Sorry to bust in on you like this, doctor, but my daughter just wouldn't give me a minute's rest until I brung her in. It's like I told you, we just can't stop her growing. Oh, I see. Well, when I have a chance to get a little better organized here, I'll give her a more thorough examination. In the meantime, I don't think you have a thing to worry about. Nothing to worry about? She's getting to the marrying time. Look, doctor, bitter water is a little ice. And when a girl don't get picked early, she just don't get married, and that's a fact, doctor. I understand. Good evening, Miss Angela. Meanwhile, doctor, We'll be seeing you when you're settled better. We always pay our debts. Came to tell you how sorry I am about what happened. We'll pay you the 250 back when the stage comes in. Then you can go someplace else. Sorry I left in such a hurry today, but well, I guess I was a little disappointed. You had a right to be. You thought you were taking up a good practice. It was, Winston. I, I see Lon got you fixed up all right. I uh, guess we could sit here and talk. Dr. Merritt, Bitter Water's not a bad place. There are some, there are some very nice people here. Yes, I've met some of them. Why did that woman talk to you and your father the way she did today? 
It doesn't matter. What I mean is, you're not staying and... And what? Well, even if you did stay, you wouldn't get rich. I didn't enter medicine to get rich, Miss Bentley. I didn't mean that the way it sounded. As long as I can remember, I've wanted to be a doctor. To help ease some of the suffering I've seen. Does that sound too idealistic? No. I remember Doc saying exactly the same words. A long time ago. Don't let anything spoil your dreams, Dr. Merritt. What about your dreams? Mine kind of slipped away along with Doc's, I guess. Didn't say if you were staying or not. You said that as, as though you wanted me to. I don't know. I don't know. Please don't do that. Are you going to stay around, you? Things have been happening so quickly. I... I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I just haven't had time to think things out. Don't bother. I'll do it for you. Go away, Slinger. How about you? You want me to go away? I don't even know who you are. Go on, honey. Tell him. How much money have we got? Money? Yes, how much have we got? Let me see. Oh. Thirty-eight dollars. We've got to have two hundred and fifty by tomorrow night. Two hundred and fifty for what? For Doctor Merritt. I'm playing poker once more, then we're through meeting the stage forever. I've got to pay him back. And I'll know if he'll stay. If he stays, it'll be for another reason. Oh, Doc. I'm tired pretending I don't care. This is my one chance at happiness. Please help me. Look, everything we value seems to have slipped through our fingers. Maybe it isn't too late to pick up the broken pieces. Please say it isn't too late. Oh, baby. Of course it isn't too late. It's never too late. for you all morning. Why? Well, at least to thank you for getting me to my room last night. You see, when, uh, when I came to, you'd, you'd already gone. How much do you belong to Slinger? How much? I don't know. Tell me, do you think it's possible for someone to change? I mean, to start all over again? 
I wouldn't be much of a doctor if I didn't have that much faith in human nature. Oh, I have to get in the town. I have to go. Do you really want to change? I have $150 here. High card for 100 What do you say? Ma'am, we don't have 100 cents between us. Doc! Doc! Yeah. Keep Dr. Merritt out of here, no matter what. Please, Doc. Yes, Angie made $150, Mr. Slinger. Still a hundred dollars short to pay Mary. How did you know? Doc told me and I told him. Didn't mean no harm, Miss Angie. If you want that hundred, you'll play for it. money? Nothing that's not wrong with you. Don't talk to me like that. You've still got my brand on you, whether you like it or not. Cut for deal. Raise your 50. I didn't say we were playing table stakes. You didn't say we weren't? Of course. How many? One. You must have gotten something good. Like uh, two pair. I'll have one with you. You know, if I get it and you don't, you're not going to be able to pay off merit. Tough, ain't it? You raised. Bet. Looks like you've got about $90 there. That's my bet. $90. You're caught. Miss Angie, uh, I guess I talk too much. That's all right, Lon.
Frankly, Dr. Medley, I can't understand your sudden need for a physical checkup. I'd say you're in fine shape. Although I uh, did notice the effect of uh, excessive imbibition of ethyl hydrate. Mm. Yes, well, of course, that's, that's the water out here. Not the water, Doctor. Whiskey. Too much of it. But, dear boy, I only drink for medicinal purposes. <laughs> Well, I'm going over to Nevada's and get something to eat. No, 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 don't do that. Don't oh, do that. Why not? Well, well because you, stop, you, you, he stop. got Miss Angie's in trouble over at the saloon. Real trouble. Real trouble. Slinger's room. Let me go, Slinger. Let me out of here. I can remember when you weren't in such a hurry. <laughs> What do you want? I was told you were in trouble. Wait a minute. While you're here, here's your money. Ansel and I always pay our bills. I didn't come for the money. Next time, keep the door locked. Dr. Merritt, I can explain. It's not what you think. It is. The Adams. The boy's sick. Something's the matter with his throat. Cough. They want you, not Medley. Lon? Yes, sir. Get my horse's water, and I gotta make Raleigh by nightfall. Oh, yes, can't sir. you take me? I'm not familiar with this country yet. <laughs> Never mind my horse. You take him. And you better hurry, Doc. What I've seen ain't good. We'll take Frank Bishop's horses. They're already saddled. But, uh, what's the matter here? What's going on? They don't want you, Medley. Go on back to the bar. Hot up. The buckskin lady is always longing to see her true love come right to town. And when he finds her... Oh. Hello, Potter. I thought you were up in Raleigh. I got back. When her true love finds her Instead of buckskin she'll wear A white gown Evening, Miss Angela. Can I buy you a drink? I knew you played poker, but uh, I didn't know you drank. Sure, sure. I never knew you to drink before, Miss Angela. Why don't uh, you and me take this bottle out and go somewhere where it's nice and quiet and have a nice, quiet drink alone now, honey? Come on. Potter, you keep your dirty, filthy hands off my daughter. 
If you don't, I'll... you what? Do what he says. I didn't do nothing. You always did look pretty coming awake. Didn't work, honey. Merritt didn't want the money. Just forget about him. I have. I want you to. Angela, it's getting late, my darling. I, I've been waiting for you a long, long time. Let you and me go home together, shall we? No. Angela, I, I swear to you, I haven't had a drink. I swear to you. What's that you call me, Nevada? The buckskin lady? Uh-huh. Just good enough to play poker in a saloon. That's a lie. She's... she's good. She's decent. That's Dr. Merritt. He'll tell you different. I don't care what Merritt says or what anybody else says. I know, my dear. I know you're good. I know you're decent. What a fool do they could care? Picking up broken pieces is not for me. Know something, Slinger? You were right. He's not our kind. How much proof do you need? They don't want me in this town and they don't want you. You want me, Slinger? We have a big world outside. And with all the money to burn, I'll get you all those pretty things that I told you about. And nobody will know who we are. Slinger, you're getting out of town. You're getting out right away. You're never coming back. If you do, I'll kill you. Don't be a fool, Doc. When he walks out of here, I go with him. No. We're getting married. No. Hurt her, old man. Give me the money. What money? All the money you've got. Boy gonna be all right, Doc? What'd you put that tube in his throat for, Doc? You cut right into his windpipe. I... I couldn't watch. Ever hear of diphtheria when the windpipe gets stopped up? No. Croup. You've heard of that, haven't you? Sure. Doc Medley's fixed croup. Guess for everybody around here. Fixed their kids for everything. Brought them into the world and even buried some of them. Yeah. And now they hate him. And you hate him too, don't you? And Miss Angie. 
No, I don't hate anybody. I'm not supposed to even think about them. I tell you, you are. Hmm? Uh, I've been meaning to tell you since yesterday. Tell me what? About Miss Angie. She won some money to pay you back. A hundred and fifty dollars she won. And then Slinger played her for the last hundred. He switched decks. He stole every nickel from her. When she found out about it, she went up to get it. She wasn't up in his room for anything else, just to get that money for you. The tube in the boy's throat, it's filling, Doc. You said to call you. All right. Why didn't you tell me this before, Lon? Uh, I, I couldn't make my mind up. Look, Lon, you get to her. Tell her that I understand now. Tell her that I'll... Please, sir. Hurry, Lon. Tell her I'll meet her in town as soon as I can get away from here. Doc, didn't you? I'd just been up to Doc's house. He's drunk as a coot. Couldn't talk. Where is she, Nevada? She's gone. What's that you always say, Lon, about star-crossed lovers? She left last night with Slinger. They're up in Butte City just about now. Getting married. Married? Hey, where are you going? Hey, Lon! Someplace. And tomorrow, Carson City. We'll take a train up to St. Louis. Hey, you're not listening. Man, are you still thinking of bit of water and merit? No. <laughs> Hotel. Maybe it's a good beginning. Get the preacher. Preachers cost money. So does being married. Shouldn't have given all our money to Doc. Slinger. Mm. You once told me your guns would take care of us wherever we went. We need money. Oh, my guns, are you crazy? <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Slinger on their honeymoon. <laughs> so funny about that. It's not funny. It's kind of sad.
Stand there. Don't make any trouble and nobody will get hurt. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. I'm going as fast as I can, sir. Well, stop calling him sir. Bring the bag over here. Don't try giving any alarms. I'm sorry about the money, Mr. Layton. Shut up. No! You leave him out. Get up. back there. Get out. No. I said get out. Come on. Right. No. Now, please, be careful. I'm going to deputize you right now. What for? Who's paying us? You paying us, Latham? Ten dollars. Ten dollars a man. <laughs> Twenty dollars. Thirty dollars. They're getting away. All right, fifty dollars each man, if I get my money back. Mercenary devil. Wanting to be paid to help catch a couple of crooks. Oh, stop your squawking. You're going to get your money back. That's all that matters to you, ain't it? And I'll wait a minute. I'm going with you. Sell my guns. They're all I got. But you could sell me out. I got enough money here to take us anywhere. And in style. Sure. Sure, you're gonna buy me high heels and fancy dresses. If I wanted a hold up man, I could have gotten one. Why didn't you stick to your trade? Angie, listen, I did it for you because we needed the money. No, not this way. <laughs> There they are, at the water hole. Don't swing us. Don't use the guns. Give them back the money. No. Please, we'll only get in deeper. Let's pay for the mistakes we've made. So that's what you want. You want them to send me to jail, is that what you want? So you can go back to Merritt. That's not true. We just haven't got a chance. Who says we ain't? But you ain't going back to Merritt, you understand? You ain't going back. I'll give them what they want. I'll give it all to them. They can have all of it. That's what they want. That'll stop them. <laughs> Come on, get on your horse. <laughs> The money. They're getting away. You hear it? I saw you. Give me that real. Oh. Hold it. Who are we fighting anyway? Get on your horses. We're through. He got what was stolen. That's all he paid for. Oh, now give it to me. Give me my money. And I want safe conduct back to Butte City. 
What about them? Now let somebody else worry about them. I'm ordering you to escort me back to safety. All right, get on your horses. We'll be in Wickenburg by night. There's no telegraph office there, and nobody will know us. You want to stop? Let's keep going. to take you away from me. So you shot him. Go ahead, kill anyone that comes between you and what you want. I want you. Yet, Doc. Well, I'll take over. Thanks for standing by. It's all right. While I'm here, I'll help Lon out and finish feeding the horses. Fine. Again. 
Like I told you, honey, I'll get you all those fancy dresses and the high heel shoes. Nobody can keep us apart. We belong to each other. Don't move, Slinger. Don't move a muscle. Take off your gun belt. I said take it off. Doyle, he... Lucky, aren't you? You got the gun with the bullets in it. How lucky. You used the other up on lot. I knew which one was empty. This don't make any sense. Doesn't it? You're going back to bitter water and you're hanging for Lam's death. If they hang me, Angie, they're going to hang you. It doesn't matter now. Angie, it's all... Step back! I didn't mean to kill Lon. You should have thought about that before you pulled the trigger. How do you figure to get us back? Those horses are beaten, you know it. I'll go back in the morning. With that arm, Angie? You may not make it till morning. I'll last. And you hang. I say we all go after Slinger. Robbed a bank. Always said he was no good. You're right, partner. Been asking for this. Don't cause the shoot line. He's been causing trouble in this town for a long time. How about that girl? She's a troublemaker, too. Mary! Has anything happened to my daughter? She's with Slinger. I know. I'm going after her. How far is Wickenburg? Oh, 25, 30 miles, maybe. Past Angel's Point. Stay west on this side of the hill. Good enough, honey. You're gonna run out of bullets. Get on your horse. Make me. Get on your horse. You wouldn't shoot me, honey. You still love me. For the last time, Slinger. Get on your horse. We're both gamblers, Angie. I'm betting you don't even make it back to Bitterwater. 
That's a bet you're going to lose, Mr. Slinger. What are you doing here? We'll talk about that later. Right now, I'm going to have to take that bullet out. She's no good for you, Doc. She's not your kind. She never was your kind. I'll make a deal with you, Angie. Let me go and you'll never see me again. You're wasting your breath, Slinger. We both made a mistake. And we're going back. I'm sorry. Two of them. Throw that gun away, Angie. Don't do it, Angie. He's bluffing you. There's only one way to find out. Throw that gun away or I'll blow him wide open. <gasps> it's up to you. Angie! Thank you. 